Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a quick look at a few new things in the June 2016 update for Adobe Illustrator CC. That's right, all new updates today for all the desktop applications, some new mobile updates as well, and this one's going to concentrate on a few cool things in Illustrator CC that you definitely want to take advantage of. So let's jump right in. I've got an Illustrator CC document open, and if I zoom out a little bit, you can see, well, it starts getting really complex. I've got like 15 different artboards here. And uh, artboards have been a long-standing uh, great feature of Illustrator CC, but getting the content that you create on these artboards out of Illustrator, especially for mobile workflows, um, has sometimes been a challenge. So, for example, even using the new GPU acceleration, I can zoom in, I can uh, pan around, take a look at my designs in real time and fluid as fast as I can move the cursor around on my computer. However, when it comes to getting things out of Illustrator now with your artboards, you're going to love this. Go to your file menu, choose export, and there's a new export for screens. So when I bring up this dialog box, you can see what it does. It gives me the artboards. It lets me choose, pick and choose which ones I want. So maybe I want the poster. Maybe I don't want the poster. Uh, I can choose between uh, not only which ones I want, but also where they're going to go. And more importantly, whether or not I want to open them, at, open the location, meaning take me to the folder I just exported them to. And here, this is where it gets fun. You'll notice that there are formats, and of course you can just say, hey, export them all out as PNGs or JPEGs or scalable vector graphics or PDFs. Or I can say, hey, I'm doing these designs for, um, for web projects for, um, on or for screen projects using uh, uh, UX designs. And what I can say is, hey, I need this to all work great for iOS. I click the iOS button, I get all the various size for retina displays. Or maybe I'm working with Android uh, devices, or both. I click Android, I get all the various sizes that you would want for uh, high DPI display, or displays on Android. And then once I click the export, I'll get, in this case, uh, 14 selected artboards, a total of 98 graphics. So that's 97 less times going to the export dialog box than you would have gone before. Uh, also, you have the ability to switch over to the Assets tab where you can actually output the individual assets on an artboard as well. So, very cool to be able to do this uh, workflow either way. Uh, so, that's one way to do it. And that is probably the best way to do it when you have multiple artboards. But let's, uh, let's uh, cancel that for a second and let's go in and take a look at uh, under the window menu, there's a brand new uh, brand new asset export, and it kind of relates to what I just showed you. So with the asset export, I can go in and pick and choose which assets I want to export. So I can say, hey, give me the balloons, give me the train, and give me whatever asset number five is. And same kind of thing. I can pick and choose what settings I want to export to. I can take off the ones I don't want. Maybe I want a, uh, here, let's do iOS again. Maybe I want a 1X and a 2X. And for the third one, maybe I want an SVG. Or maybe I want that one to be for my blog. So I need it to be a, a ping file. That's going to be uh, just instead of how many times, let's just make the width 650 pixels, which is the width of the images on my blog. All right, so that way I get... Uh, the 1x for the website, 2x for the website, and the 650 uh, pixel wide version for my blog as well. So you'll love the exporting capabilities of Adobe Illustrator um, CC in this June 2016 update. All right, let's take a look at uh, a new document. So we'll just create a new document. We'll click OK. I didn't even look to see what it was set to, but it doesn't matter for this. <coughs> and let's take a look at some of the things that we've been able to do in the past. So for example, let's say you took a rectangle or a rectangle tool, you drew out a rectangle and you notice that you get the, um, the ability to do live shapes. So for example, I can go ahead and just pull this in, these handles in, 
and I get my live shape corners. And of course I can do them individually. However, let's undo that for a minute. And let's say we make this really small. Okay, great. Still have the live handles and our live corners, live shapes. And now if I make it too small, look at what happens. Instead of bunching it all together and making it impossible for you to actually access those handles at a certain size, which you can set in the preferences, the handles auto hide. They're still there. So for example, if I grab my zoom tool and I zoom in and flew it real time and I go ahead and select it, my handles reappear because I'm zoomed in high enough to where I can see the handles, work with the handles without it being a hindrance. Uh, and if I zoom back out, uh, the handles disappear, they auto hide. Now, uh, just again to remind you that if you're using the live shapes, uh, you have the ability to do it now just or more, more than just rectangles. So for example, if I drag out a nice ellipse, hold down my shift key, make it a perfect circle. Uh, let's go ahead and fill that with a color. And let's do that as well. Oh, hang on. Let's toggle that. Okay, get a nice color in there. Uh, we, we have the handles to make it a different size, but you've also got this great, what I like to call the pie cutter. So just simply twirl that handle around and get the pie shape that you dreamed about that was a little bit longer, a little bit harder to create from scratch uh, than just simply sl uh, sliding this handle around. And of course, you go all the way around, you start getting it back again, go that way, and you get the pie piece that you need for whatever your design is going to be. And that's always live, so you can always come back in and make more changes to it. Now, if we go in and we do uh, the polygon tool, same kind of deal. If I draw out a polygon, oops, sorry. Got the ellipse by mistake. Let's do the polygon, there we go. And if I draw the polygon now, great. I get the polygon, same kind of thing. I get the ability to go in and change those to rounded corners if I choose to. Or this little hidden handle here with a plus and minus on it, that allows me to change the number of sides it's going to have. So if I want a polygon with more sides, I can drag it over, get a polygon with more sides. I want a polygon with less size. Maybe I wanted a triangle all along. I quickly get the triangle. And of course, I can still continue to fill that with whatever colors I want. And uh, I have my vector shape that is always live. And the ability, of course, to combine it with other shapes uh, using things like the Shape Builder tool. So with the Shape Builder tool, I could select both of those. Go and now I got them both selected. I have the shape builder tool and I can just drag across and combine that into a new shape. Uh, so, very cool to be able to do this with the uh, live shape, live corners, handles, and the ability to change this into any configuration that I need. All right, uh, last but not least, I just want to point this out since I know many of you are using Adobe Stock these days. And if you're using Adobe Stock in the Adobe applications, uh, especially like Illustrator, where um, searching not only gets easier, but searching by specific categories. So for example, let's say I'm looking for uh, winter images. I don't like winter, but <laughs> I'm looking for winter images. Now I get to, and by the way, this is normally twirled up by default. So let's go ahead and pull this whole panel off so you can see what I'm doing here. Oh, libraries, there we go. And once I pull the libraries panel off, you'll notice that when I go up here, I have a new twirl down. I can twirl this down and I, now I can specify. Um, normally you'd see photos by default, but I can say, you know what? I'm an illustrator, I wanna work with vectors. So I can turn off photos, I can turn on illustrations, I can turn off illustrations and I can just have vectors or whatever it is that I need. Now, if I see an image that I like, which I kind of like this winter cell image. I'm going to go ahead and license that. Uh, once I license that image, or I could just download a preview and see if I really want it or not. But once I uh, license that, that will come in to my library as a vector image. And so it's downloading the high res version of it now, or the vector version of it now. And uh, once that vector has uh, synced to my library, as it just did, I can now double click on it, open it up in Illustrator where I've got access to all the pieces, all the vectors, and I can pick and choose what I want, and more importantly, what I wanna do with it. 
So if I want to change that to a different color, or maybe I just need the hat right now, I can copy the hat, switch back over to my other new document, and paste in just the hat. So a lot of times I might see a piece of uh, stock art that I want, but I only want part of it for what I'm working on. And that's a perfect use for having the vector search capability in Illustrator CC. I don't have to bother with all the photos when I know I want vectors. So that's it for this quick update on a few of the new things in Illustrator CC 2016, um, June 2016 actually update for um, what's new in Illustrator CC. So that's it. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.